thank her for my mom for having to do the caregiving, even though she loved my grandmother, but also anger coming from my grandmother for having to feel like she was being taken care of. Do you deal with that? Do you see that very often? And what what is that about? And how can you yes. move through and pass that? It has a lot to do with grief. And I think actually somebody who registered it asked about um, at what point does caregiving become care give, grieving? And you, a lot of times that term care grieving, grieving is used in the palliative care context at end of life. But um, as you know, you're still caring for someone and you know that their death is imminent. But I would say that grieving can begin the day you become a caregiver, the day you find out about your loved one's um, your loved one's diagnosis, um, or that you know something about their life is changing, and a lot of the anger. Um, and as we, as you may know, you know, anger is a part is one of the stages of grief. You're losing a lot. You're um, you're losing not just your identity you know, as a person and the things that you have to do on a day-to-day basis. And, you know, yes, caregiving does bring its, it's um, physical, emotional, and mental stresses, but also there's a the relationship factor. Your relationship with this person is changing. As I think Cheryl was saying earlier, it's like sometimes the, the role is reversing. If it's a parent-child caregiving um, relationship and the child is having, the adult child is having to um, care for the parent in the way that they used to be cared for when they were small. That can be very difficult. You know, you don't want that change. You know, even outside of the caregiving um, context, we can get angry about change because we're frustrated. And especially if there's nothing you can do about it, or if there seems to be nothing that you can do about it. In terms of the person who's receiving care, you know, just imagine they're going through the same thing. You know, they're losing pieces of themselves. Um, They aren't able to live the way they used to. They don't have the same autonomy. The way that I would say you navigate this, and unfortunately, I wish that there was a magic pill to any of this, and but the, I think the closest thing that we have are a combination of patience and just compassion for each other, patience with ourselves, because sometimes it's just difficult to have patience, you know, with someone else. And, you know, we may have to take those moments and, you know, and take and take a breath and come back to the situation if we can and just compassion for each other um, and those moments where inevitably and they will inevitably come where the anger and the frustration bubbles up and it expresses each other itself somehow you know you always of course want to avoid harm and i think that you know most people do do that it, i think it's just rare circumstances where um the anger can't be managed um, in a safe way. If it can't be managed in a safe way, obviously um, you should reach out and those resources that I had mentioned earlier can help with that. Um, if you feel like you can't provide care safely or that the person that you're caring for may be um, a danger to yourself, but more often than not, it's just the day-to-day frustrations. And that taking care of yourself, you know, the things that I mentioned about making sure that you're keeping your medical appointments, taking care of your medication, looking at your diet, getting your sleep, you know, doing those things, even though it may seem like, oh, one more thing I have to do today, the cumulative effect of all of that is that it really fortifies you for this journey. And the cumulative effect of not doing those things is that it makes it harder to manage those inevitable moments of frustration. One of the things that I had to do when making a schedule for my mother's um, aid was to figure out something in there for me. So, So that meant that I had eight hours for me. I I try to do something just so I can get some peace because this task, there's absolutely no way to explain, to fully make people understand unless they've experienced the, you know, the um, whole caregiving uh, task because the piece that I have to reconcile is my emotions with my anger and my lack of passion. And I know that I need to see a counselor, but somewhere internally, I'm afraid of hearing things. So I have to figure out how to get past not wanting to hear certain things 
and just make the appointment because I, I, I surely do need some type of consultation to get me past points that I don't even recognize I'm, I'm battling with. A lot of my outlet was being involved with my job, with my family. I was in the, um, that sandwich relationship because not only was I taking, helping taking care of my mom, but I had my granddaughter as well that I was assisting with. So I don't know, I, I think they called it a sandwich relationship because you're taking care of your mom and your grand. And so that was pretty much um, a lot for me during the time, but I had outlets with my job. I had a very, very demanding job. And even though it was demanding, that was sort of like an outlet for me going to work because um, I had to sometimes, I had to get away because I saw my mother deteriorating and that was, that was wearing on me as well. For me, seeing my mother having to be bathed like a baby and taken care of and as, as though she was a baby, those type of things wear on you. But I knew that it was coming to near the end. And all I wanted to do was to make sure that she was comfortable in those last um, stages of her life. So um, yes, you're angry. Um, there's all kinds of emotions that you go through day by day. Uh, that was the biggest part of, of my life was that I had my faith. All of the feelings are valid. Thank, thank you for saying that, Karen. I was going to say something similar to that, that everything that everyone, you know, are feeling, some of the anger, frustration, they are valid because they are what you're experiencing at, at the time. However, what I'm also hearing is, but I know that I need to find a, you know, either a different outlet. I know because I think that's the other side of, of, of caregiving knowing that we need to care for ourselves. Lisa mentioned, you know, a counselor as well as her faith and Sherelle mentioned her faith and the outlet of work. I want to go back to the point about counselors. I know many jobs, if some of you are working, you know, there's an employee assistance program. Often, you know, jobs may offer employee assistance program, EAP. And I would highly recommend that you reach out to them. Sometimes people are hesitant because they think that then their job is going to know about their, whatever the personal issue is. And when you make those appointments, it is done in, in strict confidence. And so no one else on your job will know that you reached out to someone and they offer an array of services, but counseling is one on a number of issues. And in this case, it would be, you know, caregiving or how to care for myself or depression, financial as well. They can pr provide 